Hey, it's me, Jeff, again, here to talk to you about web analytics terminology, some of the terminology that we're going to hear as we learn web analytics. There's a lot of words that we use in web analytics that I might take for granted. So before we even get too far down this path, I just want to share with you some of the common terms that we use almost every day in web analytics, some of the things you're going to see inside of Google Analytics, just to make sure that you understand what they mean and to help just give you a good understanding of what we're going to be building on as we go forward. And so that's what we're going to be doing for this lesson. So let's define some common terms that we hear in web analytics. For those of you who watched the first video, you can probably remember back to when we saw the definition of analytics that came right in a Google search result. And that is basically it's the information resulting from the systematic analysis of data or statistics. And in other words, that's basically just the information that we're using to tell a story from the data that we collect. And we also talked in the first video about JavaScript. JavaScript is the technology basically that makes web analytics possible. So it's a piece of technology that works on the browser or the client side. And we use that JavaScript technology to send data into our different programs. And that's how a website knows that somebody came to the website and how somebody was tracked. And specifically within JavaScript, we have something on the tracking code. So you might have heard about an analytics tracking code or, or tracking code. You might have heard that term before. To me, it's basically the JavaScript code that sends data to Google. And now I don't want you to freak out, but I'm going to show you a preview of what that code looks like. This is the Google Analytics tracking code. And what this does is it basically sends data to Google Analytics each time that a new page is loaded. And we'll talk about why the page view is such an important thing as we continue to go through this definition. But for now, I just wanted to give you a preview. If, if somebody says to you the tracking code or the Google Analytics code, this is what they're referring to, is, and this is what it looks like. The next term that may be something that you've heard before but don't know what it means is cookies. Now, cookie is how your browser helps a website remember who you are. And so let me break that down for a second just to help us understand what a cookie is. So we've heard of cookies, maybe you gotta clear your cookies, cookies are bad, cookies you gotta get rid of them, all that stuff. That Cookies are not necessarily a bad thing. And so let's think about it. Whenever you go to say google.com and you check your Gmail account, you know how they notice, they, they say, welcome back, Jeff, or they say, welcome back, your name, and that's how they know who you are. Or if you want to sign into a bank, or if you want to go to places, the way that the website's able to say, welcome back, the way that they even know who you are is by using cookies. So in many ways, cookies are good because it helps each website remember who you are and store information about you. Now, I've got a bad name because there's some things that you can do with cookies that aren't necessarily good. But for our purposes, for using the tools like Google Analytics, we need cookies because that's how we know if somebody's a new visitor to our site or if they're a returning visitor. If somebody's been coming back over and over to our website, cookies are how we know if it's the first time they've been to our site or it's the last time or the, the most recent time they've been there. So cookies are really important for analytics because otherwise we would have no idea if we've seen this person before. And as you think about your marketing, it's easier to market to somebody if you know more about them. And so cookies are help, how we know more about the people who are visiting our website. So as a consumer, cookies might be scary for you, but as a marketer and as an analyst, cookies are very important because that's how we know who we're tracking. Now there's two different types of cookies. One's called the first party cookie, and that is basically saying that the cookie data is only accessible by the domain name that is throwing the cookie. So for example, analyticscourse.net, Google Analytics would access that through a first party cookie, and that's how, the, that's how I can track if you come back to the website over and over again. So that's called the first party cookie. Now that's first party cookies are good because you're using that data for for what you want to and, and you're using it just yourself. Now there's something called the third party cookie where you can send the data to multiple different domain names and share it across domains and track somebody across the web. And that's where things start to get a little bit scary because not only are you, you know, you're not in an implied contract just with the person who whose website you visited, but now with every other website that's connected to that. And so that can get a little bit scary. The good news is, though, if you're worried about cookies, and especially third-party cookies, is that Google Analytics relies on the first-party cookie. So you're safe there if you are looking at doing tracking. The next thing I want to talk about is filters. Now, filters are something, you know, you, the word filter means many things in many parts of the language. And in this case, a filter is basically, it's just limiting the data that makes it into Google Analytics. Now, looking back to our slide from the first 
lesson, we can see that there's all these different things that are happening behind the scenes when we're collecting data. The collection, that's the JavaScript tracking code. That's how we're sending our data into Google Analytics. Configuration, it's what we do in the administrator portion of Google Analytics, and then the data is processed, and then it goes into the reports. If you want to filter or limit the data that goes into the reports in your Google Analytics, you need to filter it. And so filters are basically a way of limiting the data that goes into your reports. Now, if you think about it, if you have a furnace or an air conditioner at your house and you have like a forced air heating system, uh, it's the same thing as like a filter on your furnace. And you're basically preventing all the little pieces that you don't want to come through through your air heating system by putting a filter on the furnace. Same with in your automobile. Filters work all over the place and they're really a great way to ensure that we get the best quality of air in our, in our daily lives. But then also when it comes to analytics, it's really just our way of ensuring that we get the best quality data. So filters, they, they might sound a little bit scary, but basically it's just making sure that only the good stuff gets through to your reports. An account, an account is not, now we're starting to talk about terminology that happens when we get into Google Analytics. So what is an account? An account is where each company or discrete business unit stores all the, your data. So for the most part, if you're running Google Analytics for your website or for your company, you're going to have one Google Analytics account. If you work with multiple companies or you work with multiple business units that are really distinct from each other, then you might have multiple Google Analytics accounts. For the most part, for most of you, you just need to have access to one account in order to get the job done. Don't freak out again, but I'm going to go back to that JavaScript we showed you. And this is how we can tell Google Analytics that it's our account. And so if you look at this line here that I'm pointing at, then you can see that this is how Google knows what account it is. Now, I've blurred out my account ID because I've actually seen people um, send data to the wrong account when you, when you don't blur it out. So I blurred it out for the demonstration purposes. But as you can see here, that's what the account is. And then you're just telling Google Analytics, this is my account. That's how they know what data should be collected. Within an account, you can have many web properties. So an account, there's one account that you have and you can have multiple properties between them. And what a property is, it's basically each domain name or app that you'd like to track uniquely or separately. So each property is basically each domain name that you wanna track. So if you just have one domain name, you really only need one web property. Now some people have multiple domain names they wanna track separately or subdomains and those would each be their own unique web property. For most people, you just need one account and one web property to go forward. Now, if you work for a company that has a lot of different websites, then you're gonna notice that you have a lot of need for different web properties. And then a view is basically for each web property, you can have multiple views. These used to be called profiles. So if you've been using Google Analytics for a while, that's what they used to be called as a profile. Now it's called a view. And a view is basically just a specific way of looking at the data that comes in for your web property. Now views are where the filters are applied. And so each view that you're looking at may have a set of filters in order to make sure you have the best quality of data or that you're looking at the things that are most important to you. And so that's what a view is. Just a unique way of looking at the different data that comes in for your web property. And so here's the hierarchy of how these work. Basically an account, like I said, can have many properties, up to 50 properties out of the box and each property can have up to 25 views. So you can have quite a bit going on within a single Google Analytics account. Now remember, each, each account should be unique to your company. And then we're gonna talk about the interface. So the interface is really what we're talking about when we go into Google Analytics. The interface is when you go to google.com slash analytics and log in, and you're looking at your data and your reports, you are in the Google Analytics interface. So it's basically where you view your reports and your settings. Everything you do within Google Analytics is within that interface. When you log in, this is probably the first thing you're gonna see. It's a report that shows things like sessions, users, page views, new session, balance rate. I'm gonna get into definitions of what each of these things means next. Sessions, we used to call these visits, but now a session is basically when somebody visits your website or your app for a specific amount of time. And the default is 30 minutes. And so let me give you an example because this might be hard to, to envision. Basically, if I'm Jeff and I visit jefflytics.com, one of my websites, and I go there at noon, and then I poke around and I view a couple different pages, and then I leave, and I don't come back until 1 p.m., then that is two different sessions for me because they're not within that 30-minute window. 
But if Jeff was looking at it on new, from noon and then kept on looking at a new page within that 30 minute window, then it would all be one single session. So a session is basically just each unique time frame that somebody's looking at your website. Now the window of 30 minutes is good for almost every single situation, so you can stick it with 30 minutes, but there's some places where you might need to have either a longer or short, shorter session duration. New sessions, you might have seen the new sessions percentage. Basically a new session is when Google Analytics sees your cookie for the first time. So if this is the first time that Google Analytics has set the cookie for somebody when they visit your website, then they're considered a new session. Now this is why I had to define cookies earlier because it probably didn't really make sense before that. But remember, a cookie is storing data about that person on your website. And so in this case, where you're sending a cookie to say, do I know who this person is or do I not know who this person is? A new session means I never saw this person before. Now the reason why a new session might be a misleading metric is because it's saying I never saw this computer before, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the person's never been to your website. That person could have come to your website on a mobile phone and it would be treated as a different session. That person could have cleared their cookies and that would be the first time that you saw it. That person could be doing many things using different browsers. All these different things could be happening and that person would be treated as a new session. And so the number of new sessions as we start seeing more visitors from mobile devices and tablets and people clearing their cookies, the number of new sessions has gone up over the years. Now returning sessions is sort of the opposite of that. It means that we have seen this person's cookie before. So if somebody's been to your website many times and keeps on coming back, and they haven't cleared their cookies and they're using the same computer, that would be a returning session. And you're going to get quite a few of these returning sessions if you have a highly loyal number of people who are coming back to your website. And so returning session just means that you've seen this person before. You've seen their cookie before. Users. So we used to call these visitors or unique visitors. You might have heard those before. Basically, a user is the number of unique cookies that have been served over a specific period of time. And what I mean by that is, say that we're looking at data for a month of our website and we're saying, I want to look at everybody who visited my website over the course of the last 30 days. If somebody came into your website five different times outside of that 30 minute window, they would have five sessions, but they would still just be one user because that person, you've seen them over and over again. So they'd have five sessions and one user. And so user basically is just an aggregate of the number of unique computers or cookies that we've seen on our website. Now, this can be an inflated number when we think about things like people clearing their cookies and people visiting us on mobile devices. And so the number of users that we have is an accurate number of how many unique computers we've seen. But that I don't know if it's necessarily the exact same thing as saying this is absolutely how many people saw our website. Page views, they're basically the number of times that a page was loaded and data was sent to Google Analytics. So this is the last time I'm gonna show you this code, so don't freak out, we're ranking it, we've made it this far, but this is what generates a page view. So the second part of that code says, tell Google Analytics that somebody viewed a page on our website. So that page view code basically says somebody viewed a page of our website. And that is how we get our page view reports. Basically, every time that your fi page finishes reloading, a page view is sent to Google Analytics, and that's how we know how people visited our website, where they went. Session dur duration, which is time on site. This is the time between the first page view of a session and the last page view, and, it's, and it has to be within that 30 minute session window. So if Jeff came to your website at noon again, and then I view another page at 12.05, another one at 12.10, and then one at 12.15, then the session duration of that visit would be 15 minutes. And now the average session duration is ultimately for all the people who have been to your website, how long have they been on your website between their first and their last page view? Now this does not, if, if I land on that last page at 1215 and I stay there and I keep my browser open for the next 30 minutes, if I click somewhere else 30 minute, one minutes later, it's actually not going to count as a long session duration. It's going to count as two different sessions. Now we'll have some more time to talk about these and if you have questions or if something's still unclear, please do ask me the question in the forum and we can make sure that you fully understand this. But I just wanted to make sure that you know how session duration is calculated. 
Bounce rate, all right, we're getting close. We're getting towards the end here. Bounce rate, it is basically saying the number of sessions where a user views only one page. They came to your website and they left. They did not click anywhere else. Now, bounce rate is something that people think is a really bad number to have a high bounce rate. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. You just want to improve it against what your number is right now. So if you have a 90% bounce rate, that means that nine people came to your website and didn't do anything else. They didn't view anything else. They didn't do anything within a page. Nothing was tracked for that person. They just visited and they were gone. And that means that one person did view more than one page. And that's why you have a 90% bounce rate. Nine out of 10 didn't do anything other than just visit that one page. Goals. Now, goals are a fundamental piece of Google Analytics and just basically a piece of any marketing strategy that's out there. And you're basically using goals to teach Google Analytics what the purpose is of your website. So you're answering the question, what is the purpose of my website? And then you're training Google Analytics to speak your language and you're training Google Analytics to keep track of that. Now we're gonna have a lot of time to talk about goals, so I'm not gonna get into any more depth than that, but just know that if you hear the word goals, specifically when it comes to Google Analytics, we are talking about the feature in Google Analytics to track what the purpose of your website is. We're tracking the positive outcomes on your site. E-commerce the last term we're gonna define for today, and that is basically e-commerce in the terms of Google Analytics is tracking the selling of products online. So if you sell products online on your website, you can use the tracking of e-commerce reports in Google Analytics in order to track how many of your products you've sold online, which really does unlock some really cool reports. So there's a lot more we're gonna learn as we dive into Google Analytics and as we go through analytics course, but I'm just gonna leave it at that for today's lesson. So just remember, here's some of the terminology that we covered. We talked about analytics, JavaScript, and how JavaScript is really basically the tracking code for Google Analytics, cookies, and how that defines whether you've seen somebody or not on the website. We talked about filters. It's about getting the right data into your views. An account has many web properties, and web properties can have many views. The interface, that's when you log into Google Analytics and you're looking at your reports. We call that the interface. You also put your settings in there. Within the interface, you're gonna notice things like sessions, which talks about new versus returning. You're gonna notice users, the count of how many unique users are on your website. Page views, which is how often people have viewed pages on your site. The duration of your session, which is the calculation between when they first got there and the last page that they viewed. Bounce rate, which is the number of people who came into your site and only viewed one page as a percentage. Goals, remember the goals are the fundamental way that we tell Google Analytics that we were successful or that a visitor of our website was, was successful more specifically. And then e-commerce, training Google to recognize when somebody bought something on our website. So like I said, that's just scratching the surface of many terms that are out there but I wanted to give you these terms before we get into the interface just so you have a better understanding of some of the things we're gonna be dealing with and that you, you know, without even looking at the code or without going around in the interface, now you at least understand what some of these major terms are. So there you go, you've completed lesson number two. Congrats, mark it as complete in your course software and we're gonna be coming back to you tomorrow with lesson number three. We're gonna be talking more about Google Analytics specifically within the Google Analytics platform. So we've talked about web analytics now. We're going to get into the Google program as we go forward. And so check your email tomorrow for our next lesson.